Inflammatory breast cancer is a very interesting biology because it doesn't present as a lump. It's essentially nests of cells, what are called tumor emboli, and they don't invade and metastasize the single cells, but they undergo what's called inv a cohesive invasion. So essentially they, they become nests of cells that tightly aggregate. So the current hypothesis about invasion and metastasis is that the single cells break off from the primary tumor and undergo a, um, a process called ep the epithelial mesenchymal transition, or EMT. And this is through the loss of the maintenance of an epithelial phenotype and then acquiring characteristics of mesenchymal cells like fibroblasts, which are very modal and very invasive. Interestingly, inflammatory breast cancer does not present that way. It, in fact, has a gain or it continues to maintain an epithelial phenotype which is characterized by the continued expression of a, a glycoprotein on the surface of the cells called ecadherin. And what ecadherin does is bind the cells together. So they tightly knit and they invade as a group of cells, which gives them a survival advantage and also, we think, confers some resistance to chemotherapy and radiation. Bromodeoxyuridine, when it's incorporated into DNA, you can detect it using antibodies to bromodeoxyuridine, or BRDU. But unfortunately, when you do that, you have to denature the DNA. And so you really don't get good quality images of those cells. And that was one of the things we wanted to preserve. So there have been new probes developed ethenyl, um, to ethenyl deoxyuridine, or EDU, and EDU is incorporated much like BRDU, but you don't have to denature the DNA. And there's a new chemistry called clicket chemistry that is combined with EDU and makes it very, very easy to detect this. And so we've used this in combination with confocal uh, microscopy with patient tumor cells um, freshly isolated from patients that develop pleural effusion, which is metastatic disease. We have been able to develop new models, three new models in fact, and they have given us insight into what this disease, what the basis of the aggressive metastasis really is. So what we do find in this three-dimensional system, the tumor spheroid system, is that we're enriching for the cells that have cancer stem cells characteristics. And in that way, we can identify some of the mechanisms by which the cells exhibit this res resistance to chemotherapy and radiation, and in fact, target those cells for eradication.